Many psychologists were not happy with behaviourism. There was a belief among some that there was too much of a focus on single events, stimuli and overt behaviour. Such criticism was especially strong from cyberneticists, proponents of systems dynamics and those who saw themselves as gestalt psychologists. Gestalt meaning configuration or pattern in German. For them, perceptions or images should be approached as a pattern or a whole rather than as a sum of the component parts. One way we do this when we learn is through schema, mental maps, stereotypes for given situations that help us make sense of the world. And these need to be created and refined as part of our learning. From this perspective, uh, learners are therefore processors of information and active creators of their own knowledge. And so differences between individuals are important as different cognitive styles or methods of approach influence learning. Cognitism, therefore, is all about exploring the black box that behaviourism chose to avoid. A large number of cognitivists suggest that learning can be seen as a process of construction. These constructivists argue that humans generate knowledge and meaning from an interaction between their experiences and their ideas. I'll mention a few here, but there are lots more for you to look at in your reading. To begin with, there's John Dewey, who's a strong proponent of learning by doing. Jean Piaget was also a constructivist who explored changes in internal cognitive structure. He identified four stages of mental growth, with each building on the other. And as it's based around child development, his work is fundamental to primary educators. Jerome Bruner is another constructivist who explored how mental processes could be linked to teaching, emphasising, among other things, learning through discovery, and developed the idea of scaffolding, which is that as knowledge is constructed, the role of the teacher is to provide the necessary scaffolding to help learners to construct their own knowledge. David Ozabel highlights the importance of what are called advanced organisers that help learners to construct their knowledge by signposting them through learning situations at the start. The key idea here is to tell learners what is going to happen ahead of time and make the connection to what they already know and to keep to that pattern. Think about using overview slides and section headers for different parts of your lectures and making links between lectures, assessments and the module whenever possible. Building on the constructivist work of Piaget and Brunner and Dewey's work on the importance of reflective thinking and experience of learning, David Kolb published his Experiential Learning Theory in 1984, stating that a person learns through discovery and experience. In his words, learning is the process whereby knowledge is created through the transformation of experience. Illustrated here, on the right-hand side, is the learning cycle, the journey of the learners from experience through reflective observation, conceptualization, and application or experimentation. From both cognitivism and its constructivist offshoot, we can see that understanding how people think is key to teaching and learning. Essential ideas to take away from it are that knowledge is constructed by learners in an active and experiential manner, that teachers facilitate that construction through scaffolding the learning process, that different people learn in different ways, and that reflection is a key element to processing information and therefore to learning. It can therefore find its way into your teaching via understanding learners' prior knowledge in order to build on it, your own use of a variety of learning activities in any one session that involve different ways of getting learners to process information, through experiential learning activities in particular, through advanced organisers, and through reflection.